friends, welcome back to the channel and happy new year. Today we have a special guest, my mom, because today we are going through the top skincare mistakes that I want you to please avoid in 2023. And mom is the queen of making skincare mistakes. Mom, when's the last time you washed your makeup sponges? For a while. <laughs> well, at least I'm cleaning my makeup brushes now. This is true, which brings us to number one, make sure that you are cleaning your makeup brushes. So general rule of thumb here is if you are using it daily, it needs to be washed at least weekly. Think of how much dirt, debris, dead skin cells, and makeup is just kind of built up on those brushes. And you are reintroducing all of that to your skin every time you apply your makeup. So please, my friends, wash your makeup brushes, and maybe keep a little reminder in your phone of the last time you've done it, just to keep yourself honest. Ooh, your makeup looks nice, Mom. Oh, thank you. Welcome. What sunscreen are you wearing? Wow, it's been raining today. Ain't no sun outside. Mom, wear the sunscreen. Okay next time because i know you don't think i'm taking off all this makeup <sighs> so definitely number two mistake does surround a sunscreen either we are forgetting to apply it doing it in the wrong order definitely you want sunscreen to be your last step unless you're wearing makeup and then makeup is your last step or forgetting to reapply it throughout the day. And definitely a big one is not using enough. I know it's not a perfect rule, but using the two finger length rule is a good start to figure out how much sunscreen you should be applying to your face. Now mistake number three actually involves getting the timing right on the best and most effective way to use antiperspirants versus deodorants. Did you know it is more effective to use your antiperspirant at nighttime versus in the daytime? This is because antiperspirants actually stop sweating. Now in order for a product to actually be classified as an antiperspirant, that brand has to prove that their product decreases sweating by at least 20%. Now these are products that usually have aluminum or aluminum byproducts. It works best at nighttime because your sweat glands are more at rest and allows the products to actually get into the sweat glands and really plug them and do all of the hard work. Whereas deodorants don't actually stop sweating at all, they actually just mask the odor that occurs whenever sweating mixed with bacteria on the skin. So if you're using a deodorant, your best bet is to use it in the daytime. But if you're using an antiperspirant, it's actually more effective to use it at nighttime. Mistake number four to please avoid my friends has to do with ignoring pain, itching, or tenderness on your scalp. This is a big one. A lot of times my patients will come into the office complaining of itching, pain, or tenderness that has been going on for years. Please do not ignore this sign and just write it off as a little bit of itching or tender headedness. Oftentimes, this is the first sign of inflammation and inflammation on your scalp can lead to hair loss or other conditions. So please, my friends, get into your dermatologist. You definitely wanna get the diagnosis sooner rather than later. Mistake number five to avoid is to stop pushing back your cuticles. I know guys, a lot of you are pushing back your cuticles, but your cuticles are there for a reason. They help to keep the skin intact above your nails, which keeps out dirt, bacteria, and debris, and helps keep you out of the dermatologist's office for things like paronychia or other nail disorders and diseases. So please stop pushing back your cuticles. You just use a nice cuticle strengthening oil or moisturize your cuticles to keep them healthy. Mistake number six is to please stop sleeping in your makeup. Sleeping in your makeup can inevitably lead to clogging your pores or exacerbating other inflammatory conditions. You just don't wanna do this, guys. So my tip is to just wash your face as soon as you know that you're in for the night instead of waiting until nighttime to actually do your skincare routine. This will one, make sure it gets done before you get tired and two, make sure that your skincare products that are in your PM routine really get a chance to be absorbed into your skin and not just end up on your pillow. Mistake number seven is forgetting to wear UV protective gloves or sunscreen when getting your nails done. 
Oftentimes, the light can speed up the accelerated signs of aging on your hands or hyperpigmentation, which can be totally eliminated by just wearing the UV protective gloves or sunscreen on your hands. Mistake number eight is to avoid letting sweat sit on your skin too long after working out. I know guys, it's a new year and a lot of us are on our fitness game, but you wanna make sure that you are not letting that sweat sit on your skin too long. When sweat sits on your skin too long, it can act as an irritant, which can lead to a damaged skin barrier and increased trans epidermal water loss, amongst other things. So my tip to make sure you're not sacrificing sacrificing your skin goals for your fitness goals is to bring a small travel size cleanser with you to the gym and actually wash your face before you leave the gym. Mistake number nine is relying on makeup wipes to remove your makeup. It's actually so much healthier and more effective and efficient for your skin for you to reach for an actual makeup remover. So like a cleanser, a balm, a micellar water so that you are gently removing the makeup as opposed to kind of doing the tugging that happens with makeup wipes plus it's better for the environment. Now I get it, sometimes you have to do the makeup wipes in emergency if you're traveling. I'm not talking about those isolated times. I just don't want you relying on this every single day as a way to remove your makeup when there's so much more effective and efficient ways. Mistake number 10 is not knowing when your products have expired or when you actually open the products and they're no longer as effective. So just take a quick look at your cosmetic counter and see when the expiration date is on a product and make sure to always jot down on the product or in your phone when you've opened the product and look at that little jar with the six months or 12 months on it so that you know oh wait this is an expired product or this is a product that is no longer as effective for me because we are spending a lot of time and a lot of money on these products you want them to actually do what they're supposed to be doing and a lot of times we're using products past their shelf life which can lead to us introducing unnecessary bacteria on our skin or it's just wasting time using a product that doesn't work as effectively anymore. Mistake number 11 is forgetting your sunglasses when going outside. Your eye area is the very first yes. area to show signs oh, of aging. Goodness. It's super delicate and thin <gasps> Thank skin. You. A lot of times when we are this driving, we are exposing ourselves nerve. to excessive sun. We're also squinting sometimes if the sun is in our eyes, which all can accelerate the visible signs of aging around the eyes. And a lot of that can be avoided by just wearing your sunglasses. Mistake number 12 you guys have heard me talk about before, but it is making sure to check in with your skin type. Quarterly is kind of a good cadence to make sure that you're still using the right products for what your skin is currently going through. We do not always have dry skin, oily skin, combination skin, sensitive skin. Our skin changes with the seasons, it changes with the climate, it changes with our menstrual cycle. So make sure that you've checked in with your skin, adjust your products according to what skin type you're currently experiencing. I have a video on how to do that linked above. Mistake number 13 is not focusing on evidence-based skincare ingredients. There are actually very few skincare ingredients that are clinically proven to do the work and actually make visible and improved changes in your skin. I'm actually going to do a video on how to build an effective skincare routine only using evidence-based skincare ingredients because why spend your hard-earned money and energy and time on ingredients that are not even proven to be effective for you. Mistake number 14 is not being properly prepared for a skin emergency because we all know they're going to happen. You're gonna accidentally burn yourself, get a cut, scrape, bruise, and you don't wanna just put anything on there. You need products that are gonna be super effective at soothing the skin, helping to calm and decrease any inflammation, which can lead to subsequent hyperpigmentation. One of my go-tos that I think everyone should have at home is the La Roche Posay Acyclopass Balm. Um, B5. This bad boy is super effective at so many different skin emergencies. It's definitely a good one to just have on hand. So I definitely would make sure to add this or a similar product like the Aven Cyclophate, even just Vaseline. So many people reach for products like Neosporum, which has a high incidence of contact dermatitis. So just make sure that you have the best products in place in case there's a skin emergency. Now mistake number 15 to avoid is not knowing the proper timing on how to moisturize your skin. You actually want want to moisturize your skin immediately after the shower when your skin is still damp and you want to use a moisturizer not just an oil so use your moisturizer and then if you want to use an oil you can use it on top to seal it in 
Now mistake number 16 I see often and it is when people do not take the proper precautions before using certain skincare products. For example, before using a retinol, you definitely want to put a barrier cream in the sensitive areas. Corners of the nose, the eyes, and the mouth are super sensitive and they need a little bit of a protective or a barrier cream, Vaseline if you will, or even like that Cycloplast that I just showed you guys will give you a nice barrier between a very strong active like a retinoid and your sensitive skin. Another mistake is using really strong actives, again like a retinoid, too heavy handed. A pea size amount is all you need for your entire face. And also just jumping straight in to use new products, especially if they're strong acids or actives without doing a patch test is a very big thing that I see in the clinic. I highly recommend that you patch test new products, especially strong ones, to make sure that you're not going to have a bad reaction to them. Mistake number 17 is just aimlessly using skincare products or following a routine without having specific skincare goals. You want to make sure whatever products you're using are targeted towards your specific skin concerns. So take a good look in the mirror, focus on what your number one skincare goal is, and make sure that the products that you are using are actually targeted to meet that goal. Mistake number 18 is to please avoid falling for false marketing claims and automatically thinking that more expensive is better. Uh, $13? I was hoping to get one a little nicer than that. A lot of times, inexpensive products found at the drugstore have tons of data and clinical research to back them up. So do not think that automatically, just because a product is more expensive, it is somehow better. Mistake number 19 is using too many products at one time. I promise guys, when it comes to your skin health, less is more. You do not have to pile on products. If you are sitting down trying to figure out how to layer all of your products, that means you're already using too many products. Keep it simple, peel it back, focus on your actual skincare and concerns, and make sure every product is targeted towards reaching that. And if there are really a ton of different actives that you really find that you need to use in your skincare routine, try alternating the nights or days that you use them so that they are not being piled and layered upon. Oftentimes that step five and six layer is not even reaching your skin and giving you the maximum efficacy and benefit of it because it has all of these layers to try and get through. Mistake number 20 to avoid is please don't give up on a product too soon. Oftentimes we put a skincare product on, we've used it for a week, and then we're like, we don't see any results. My friend, you often not gonna see results in just one week of a product. And so many times I see patients give up on a product too soon. This especially is common when it comes to acne or anti-aging and hyperpigmentation concerns. It takes time for those products to actually visibly show you the results but they are doing the hard work behind the scenes. Sometimes it takes three and six months of being consistent with the skincare product for you to actually see the results. So please don't give up too soon. Mistake number 21 is to please avoid the trends. This is where I see a lot of patients get in trouble. They were doing great on a certain regimen and then they jump on some trend they saw on TikTok and it throws their skin barrier off completely. Just because something worked for someone with a very specific skin type on some social platform does not mean it's going to work for you. Stay with your tried and true. And oftentimes these trends are crazy and they can lead to damaged barriers and hyperpigmentation and they're not worth following. Mistake number 22 is forgetting that your face, your neck, and your upper chest is all a unit. You don't want to neglect using products on your neck, on your chest, on your hands. All of these are spots that show aging and you don't want your face to be on point and your neck to look a completely different age. So make sure that you put your skincare products down your neck. Make sure that you are still doing nice exfoliating treatments and moisturizers for your hands. These are all important areas. And oftentimes my patients come to me when they're in their older age, really wanting to reverse the signs of aging. And this is something that can be prevented. So if you're in your 20s, your 30s, and you're watching this video, my friend, do yourself a favor. Make sure you put your sunscreen on your hands and your neck. And mistake number 23 is knowing to avoid solely relying on Dr. Google. 
know when to see a doctor guys a lot of times patients are coming to see me when conditions have gotten quite severe so know when to see a doctor if you're using a product that you found over the counter and it's not helping you within a two week period of time i will consult a physician so that your condition doesn't progress if you guys stuck with me this long Thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you so much for all of your support. Happy 2023, guys. Let me know what content you want to see this year. And until next time, be well.